Welcome to the Monsters of Metal podcast and YouTube channel. Uh, today we are doing episode three. Um, thank you if you joined us from our previous ones, or if you haven't watched them, please go back and watch them. Um, we did Metallica, Metallica, and we also did uh, Megadeth, Rust in Peace. So this is our third album, and we are delving into Somewhere in Time, the yeah, Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, the... The band that everybody in the metal scene loves, really. There's, there's no doubt. If you they don't, should. Love, they should. If they, they should. If, if you don't, don't. <laughs> shame on you. Shame on you. You go back and you listen to this album right now. Normally, we, uh, the format so far has been we've done the number one selling mm. or the most famous album by that band. This time, we're kind of just going into a bit of a fan favorite, really. Mm. Um, we wanted to. This, well, it's my personal favorite. I, uh, we had a discussion between. Uh, Seventh Son. Yeah. Seventh Son and uh, Somewhere in Time. And uh, I won that fight. Uh, and did you? <laughs> <laughs> I won that fight. And we are doing Somewhere in Time. Uh, this is the sixth studio album by uh, Iron Maiden. And it was released on the 29th of September, 1986. Um, and it was, it was famous for the band's first kind of dipping a toe into uh synthesizers guitar synth yeah guitar synthesizers mainly yeah um but they did use synths on uh heaven can wait okay yeah i mean they went full synth full keyboard on seventh sun seventh sun yeah because it went away from guitar synths yeah. to yeah uh keyboard synths mm -hmm. which um have you seen the guitar that um adrian smith had made the jackson the jackson yeah with all the midis and all yeah. the, like the, all the different jacks and all the different buttons uh -huh. it was pretty wild um, so this, this album came off the back of, uh, they just finished the, um, they just finished touring, uh, the world slavery tour. Um, and it was lasting 331 days and they played 187 shows. That's, that's Iron Maiden though, isn't it? That's yeah. like, they, if they tour, they, they tour, they tour, but especially during the eighties. I mean, they were like, they considered four months, like a long break. Yeah, you know, yeah, and they were smashing out albums, mm -hmm. and it, you, yeah. there was very rarely a time where there was an album, yeah, that wasn't a year apart, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, well, yeah, uh, 80, 82 for Number of the Beast, yep. 83 for Peace of Mind, 84 yep. for Power Slave, 86 somewhere in time, and then, yeah, another couple of years, and you'd have a good old Seventh Son, Seventh Son, mm -hmm. which is definitely coming, so don't, don't oh, worry yeah. too much about that. We've, we've uh, already decided on that one, um. So this, uh, originally Bruce Dickinson uh, wanted to take the band in a very different direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bruce being Bruce wanted to do some acoustic tunes and some uh, music. And uh, he was told in no, no yeah, yeah. certainty. <laughs> yeah, he was just like so exhausted from the touring and like doing the same stuff. And he kind of, he, sa he, he said in his book that he'd got to a point where he had, uh, he didn't want to, the, the word he used was stagnant. He didn't want Maiden to become stagnant doing the same thing over again. So he was like, we need to do a massive change. And then, yeah. Which, we all you know, know, sometimes works. but Sometimes it no, works. Not in Maiden. No. Maiden no. are going to do Maiden. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to goddamn like it. There's yeah. going to be galloping. There's going to be <laughs> just synths. Synths, uh, apparently. Air Raid Sirens. Air Raid Sirens. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they basically... Steve, it's Steve's band. Mm. Steve's oh, band. yeah. Steve's yeah, yeah. And, uh, so the, Bruce took a step away from all the writing from this album. He? He I don't think he's got any writing no. credits on it at all. No. Um, uh, this is like the Adrian album. This is the would, Adrian I album. I would say. This, like he stepped up massively for it, this album. Yeah. And didn't he step up? He came up with, is it two? He came up with fully formed songs, uh, Wasted Years, and uh, Stranger in a Stranger Land, mm -hmm. which are absolute bangers. This, what do you think of this album anyway? What's your. So this album is my dual favorite. Dual favorite. Dual favorite. Right. Yep. So I would say, so my Metallica are my, like my childhood. Yep. Right I grew baby. up with them. That's my number one go-to. Mm. Um, and Maiden, I've always been my like dual first, if you know what I mean. They're like a close, yeah. whereas Metallica's like a hundred, Maiden is 99.9%. 99. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, so that's where I stand with Iron Maiden. As far as the albums, I've always, people have always said, what's your favourite Maiden album? It's a and I've, one. All, I've always said, and it's just been my default thing, if I could take half of Seventh Son yep. and then half of Somewhere in Time and okay. make the perfect album, I what would. What about your top three then? 
What would be your top three maiden? Top album? three maiden album. That yeah. is a really hard question, but it would off the top of my head, it would most likely be Seventh Son, Somewhere in Time, and because you like some of the newer stuff as well, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I love the newer stuff. Yeah, um, Brave New World's great, but then again, I really like Peace of Mind. Yeah, Pro- probably. Yeah, I'd say Peace of Mind third. Peace of Mind. Yeah. Although yeah. I do love all the, the new Maiden stuff You like as the well. new Maiden mm-hmm. as well. So we, we recently, when did, when did we go? It was, is it this year? Uh, it was this year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we were very privileged. We got to go to Birmingham and watch the Somewhere, wasn't the Somewhere in Time, was it the Senjutsu? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere, uh, Days of Future Past. Days of Future Days Past. Days of Future yeah, Past. Yeah, we got to go to the Days of Future Past. So we got to see some of these songs played, mm-hmm. which was great. Yeah. And we, and we got to sample some of those mega pints. In the in the venue, some of those. Um, this was one of Maiden's most expensive recording. Yeah, albums. I'm not surprised where they did it. Yeah. yeah, so they recorded the in the Bahamas. They recorded the what the bass and the drums. Yeah, they did. Uh, what is it? Uh, Compass Point the Studio was called Compass in Point. Bahamas, and they had also recorded Power Slave there. I as mean, well. that's baller, isn't it? Oh yeah. Get, I'm going to the Bahamas. So they did the drums and bass in the Bahamas. Yep. They weren't happy with the guitars there, so they took extended time to do them in... It was out, It was like in the outskirts of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Of course they did. Yeah. They went to the Bahamas. Yeah, they yeah. To, so they tracked the, the guitar and the vocals in uh, just outside, somewhere just outside of Amsterdam. Sick. And then, just because they can, they decided to fly to New York to, uh, to mix it all. So they basically just picked party cities. Yeah, to record much. this album. They yeah, yeah. And- quick, a quick little story on like the on the New York side of things. So yes. Adrian never you really used to get involved in the mixing side of things. He tracked the guitars and then and then that, that was, was it. his thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but obviously he was quite invested on this album. He had a lot of uh, uh, equity equity in it, if mm. you want to call it that. So he flew out to New York to help with the the mixing side of things. Okay. And um, there's a story where <laughs> he was staying in some some hotel where all the stars stayed. And uh, he was, so he had, so he was tracking in the day and obviously he was like homework, right? So he was taking it home in the night, blasting it on the stereo, making notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was like three in the morning and he gets a knock at the door and some guys just like, I like the music. Can I come in? (laughs) And it was some guy just. Was he Indian? (laughs) No. (laughs) That's my terrible Welsh accent. Yeah, sorry if anyone from Wales is listening. Um. Uh, he um, he came, he uh, knocked at the door, and um, it was uh, Tom Jones stood there with a bottle of Jack and oh, yeah. a cigar, and was just like, "I like the music." Tom Jones is an Iron Maiden fan, That's apparently like so. Him, and he, he, uh, yeah, so he stayed there for a couple hours, and they just drank, smoked cigars, and I mean, listened I'd, to the rough mixes, pretty much. I'd, I'd party with Tom Jones. I reckon he knows how to get down. Yeah, he enough. knows how to party. Uh, so the uh, the the, the, mu- the movie the uh, tra- the album was produced by Martin Birch. Mm-hmm. Um, he he produced uh, a lot of Rainbow stuff. Yeah, uh, he'd worked with Ronnie James Dio, and he worked in the Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. Obviously, again, Ronnie Mob James. Rules. Mob Rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he also did a lot of White Snake stuff. Yeah. I think he did a lot of White Snake stuff. But then he kind of went on to Maiden, didn't he? And he yeah, he came he did on a tenure in Killers. Second, second album second and he, album. he did everyone up until yeah uh, well he did it up until fear of the dark i think fear of the dark, when yeah. he ended but yeah, fear yeah, of the dark. he did the majority of them yeah um and i, I must admit, like i've been obviously because we've we're doing a podcast about this album i've been listening to this album non-stop and it is spectacularly produced I think. Mm. it is just a fantastically produced album i love this album so you know you're gonna get nothing but you're not gonna get a fair review so I like the last one. It was fair. <laughs> we love Rust in Peace yeah, and yeah. we love Megadeth. Listen, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, okay, so um, unless there's anything else you want to say, do you want to move on? Should we uh, start the first track? Yeah, I think we've, uh, yeah, we've did a good little uh, intro to the, to the album I think there. So. I think yeah, we should yeah, get yeah. listening. That's, yeah, let's go. And uh, say so the title track, Caught Somewhere in Time. And there's the synth, just that bass. Yeah. Two fingers. That bass. I, yeah, I feel sorry for his wife. So I love the, like, the dual guitar harmony. Love it's so good. And just the galloping bass. The constant, it's, I think yeah. almost the bass is the most Iron Maiden thing. Ugh. Yes. 
that was called Somewhere in Time, as, as all you people know, because, you know, Bruce said it a million times. Um, so this song was inspired by the 1979 movie Time After Time. Uh, in the movie, H.G. Wells pursues a friend who turns out to be Jack the Ripper. As you do. As you do. And, uh, yeah. And he claims the sanctuary in a world of violence. This, yeah, I'm just reading what I wrote down. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> he cares. Um, yeah, but any any points on that with you? Any guitar points for you? Yeah, it's a great, uh, great guitar, great guitar. orientated yeah. song. Um, yeah, like you, like I said, I mean the synthesizers at the start, yeah. are absolutely immense. Um, yeah, well, let me get my, uh, let me um, get my, uh, the, I'll show you what I mean. Oh, 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 what's coming out? Uh, just for anybody who might be listening on the podcast, we are pulling out another guitar. This is this is the last one we've got. So <laughs> for the for the going full eighties for the Kramer, thumbnail, baby. We, we got the Kramer with the banana headstock. Yeah, it's a, it's another. What's that shape called again? Uh, it's an explorer shape. Explorer. That's yeah. it. I was going to say Thunderbird. Um, another explorer. You do like your explorers? I do. Flying V next. What? So I have to sit here like this. <laughs> yeah, I just want you to have it just like Alexi like, from Children of yeah, Bodom. That's like. exactly right. I just want you to be uncomfortable. Really, so. <laughs> just so I look like the cooler one for once. Yeah. yeah so, like I said, um, they did a lot of guitar synths on yeah. this album. Um, and I have a synth on here, actually. So, this is what happens when you put guitar on synthesizers. Okay. There you go. Yeah, How, love it. You can't deny that. That's some. I got, sweet I got, synth. I got it like uh, a couple of months ago, and I just uh, this is like a, a synth preset. Yeah, and I just because obviously you play play single notes on it. I was just like. Oh, oh, that's, oh, oh. oh no, baby! Here we go. <laughs> That is an attack. That is, yeah, that's something. That is, yeah. But uh, we definitely need more synth in metal, um, maybe. Yeah, um, the the way that that song starts off, you know, with the... Oh, such an iconic intro. Obviously, can't play both the harmonies at the same time. Why not? To get the full effect with one person, but you know, well, you know how harmonies work in Maiden, you know. Yeah, well, no one expects me to be doing that, so you're on your own there, <laughs> mate. You best figure it out. The bit I, the bit, one of the bits I really like in that song is the, um, the... Yeah. Yeah, I love that. that. I love that little riff. That it's little really shift cool, up it? is uh, the same, but just down a few notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. Um, well, I spoke about that. You know that bit where he does the the tapping. Yeah, it's like the. Oh, that's it. Uh... Oh. That type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's two one. That's two one. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> well, it's okay. You were tapping. You were tapping. I was tapping. You were also tapping that mic. Uh, yeah. Um, great song. Yeah. Great, great song. Great, mm -hmm. great, great song. Um, let's move on to the next song, which oh, yeah. is Wasted Years, which is a great song. Again, written by Adrian Smith, like we said in the beginning. And it was the first single mm -hmm. to be released from the album. Yeah. yeah. Really, do you know? I said last, I think it was the Metallica episode we did. I was like, I have this thing where the most, uh, the songs that were the singles or the mm. ones that most people are like, oh, you know, the, the, the one people songs, know, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I'm always like, no, there's always better songs on the album, and that's mm. just not being like, ooh, 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 yeah, yeah, I yeah. genuinely like, I always think there's better, yeah. And, um, but Wasted Years is, is kind of like an exception, it's like, 
It, yeah, it's and one of the only ones they still play now. I was going to say it's the first a single, and it's it's one I go to. Still. It's a staple. It's such a good song. So they always play it live, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as much as I. But, um, okay, so here we go. Let's go on to wasted years. wasted years, and we'll talk about it afterwards. Okie dokie. And here it comes. Wasted years when the computer catches up. Oh, oh no. Oh no. It's coming. There we go. Here we come. Again, sweet intro. Yeah, the lyrics are like proper road dog lyrics, aren't they? You know, like you do love a road, road dog song. You yeah, do love- when I was in Afghanistan, listened to this album quite a bit actually. What were you doing in Afghanistan? Just visiting? <laughs> Business or pleasure? Ugh. Before the solo, do 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 do. Dual bass guitar solo, baby. Yes. 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 It's a great song. It's the wasted years. So, um, when we, I don't know if you've never seen it, you need to, well, we've seen it because you said it to me last night, but <laughs> the infamous German uh, Top of the, uh, not, it yeah. wasn't Top of the Pops, was it? It was, uh, it's kind of like that. It was kind of like the German version. I think it's called Pit. I think yeah. I remember reading. Yeah. It was called Pit. I just assumed it was Top of the Pops, but it wasn't. And uh, they were famously told that they weren't allowed to play live. They had to lip sync mm-hmm. and uh, they were not. Yeah. They were super cool about it. Yeah. They said, so they'd done like top of, they, so they'd done lip syncing stuff before, they did, but they'd done with, um, they've gone on like TV shows and stuff, but they hated because they said that they, oh, he said, he said something like the t- uh, t- people that work in TV are like the cretins of the universe. And, then he, and then he goes, oh, on rare occasions though, there are the odd where you sort of backtrack. Yeah. But, but basically they had, they had, they had worked in TV and they would always say, look, you know, when the guitar solo is happening, make sure you pan to, pan to the guitarist. Yeah, when yeah, there's yeah, a drum yeah. bit and all the TV that they had had done at that point, it was, you know, there was a guitar solo and they'd focus on the singer yeah. or the bassist. And they just, they weren't happy with working with the TV they, company. They, yeah, they didn't like the fake. Yeah. So they basically got told, you know, you have to lip sync for this thing. So they thought, well, okay, well, they don't get the panning right anyway. So let's, let's have a laugh. Yeah. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure like 10 seconds into the performance, Bruce grabs Steve's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. guitar, a uh, bass, mm-hmm. and then uh, Bruce, uh, Steve's on vocals. At one point, Nico just stands up and there's like no one on the drum kit and you can just do it. <laughs> and yeah, then he comes up to the mic and he's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, fair play. And that's a five minute long song. Yeah. So, and, they, and they're just swapping all their instruments. And they filmed the whole thing. Could you imagine being yeah. in the crowd? Yeah, you'd be, you'd like, be like, what's going what, on? What is happening? Um, but yeah, so like we previously said with uh, Wasted Years, Adrian, he was reluctant to kind of show the song to Steve. And uh, he, he basically Steve caught him messing around, and play, practicing and playing, and like recording little bits and stuff like that. And uh, asked him what it was, and he said, "You probably won't like it. You probably won't like it." But uh, here we are, um, and uh, it ended up being the you know the commercially successful single off the uh, mm-hmm. off off the album. Yeah, what a song. What a song. What a song. That intro, it's really cool. Yeah. We just gave up on TV companies and decided they're all complete and utter cretins. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> It's yeah. yeah, it's just so rhythmic, that isn't it? Solo bit where you said that it's tapping. It's mm. just, it's just um, uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Oh, okay. Oh, 
holy shit, but it he nailed like a solo. That's not a solo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closest you're going to get, baby. That's the closest, yeah. Little licks. <laughs> Little licks is what you're getting, and you'll like it. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Definitely mm-hmm. awesome. Um, so the next song we have, well, is this is anything else you want to say about the old uh, wasted years? Um, oh, actually, yeah. Oh, oh, so oh, oh. one thing that people do point out oh. with the intro. I'm not one of those people. Mm, sounds awfully familiar to another Maiden song. Oh, is this like the mega death call? I don't know if you know it because it's on like one of the newer, uh, mm. the newer-ish albums. No. What song is it? Shadows of the Valley. From? Uh, Book of Souls. Okay, Book of Souls, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's also very f- similar to... Um... Go for it. Which is Passchendaele. Passchendaele. Do you know that song? No. Uh, so it's uh, off of Dance of Death, mm. 2003. Maybe. Um, but yeah, people always point that out, that it sort of sounds very I similar. mean... And it is, it is open 12, uh, 12, 7, I mean, eight, how many albums have they come out with? Are you going to use a couple? 16, I think. 17. Listen, recycle. Yes. <laughs> we remember that. Adrian Smith is saving the planet by recycling those riffs. <laughs> So oh. yeah, I think that's all really that's all. to say about Wasted Years. That's what a all song. we to say about Wasted mm-hmm. Years. Okay, well, you know, an absolute banger. Um, did you, I had a, I don't know if you remember, I had a denim jacket with patches on and I, I had a Fear of the Dark. Yeah. Everybody, if you had a, a patch jacket at some point, you must have had an Iron Maiden. And if you didn't, you're a piece of... Get one. Get one. <laughs> get a jacket and get one. Just... Sew it on anywhere. Uh, okay, so next song we are on to is Sea of Madness. Let's see if this is going to get us there. And uh, we, the Sea of Madness. Here we go. Here it comes. Listen to that bass. That aggressive bass. Fingers of steel. Stop being weird. You stop being weird. You can hear the synths in the background. I think it's become better with age I think you've got through your veg now it's on to the dessert no you, you can't play heavy metal with synthesizers I like metal. Yeah. what do you know about that one not a lot I'll oh, be okay. honest uh, through like my extensive research uh, yeah there's not a lot said there's no, I haven't found any like because most of the songs I've managed to find quotes about from the directly from the band and stuff like that but there's not a lot about mm. this song to be honest and then what I have found is it's kind of divided between fans yeah. What they believe, what they believe it's what about. they believe it's about. Yeah. So yeah. some some believe it's interpreted it as like mental health and and the descent into madness and uh yeah. So like with the lyrics, like when all you can see brings you sadness and that's I think it's very literal interpretation yeah. as well. And then yeah. the other way is that the the state of humanity is the other version that people claim that turning their back on. I think it's just one of those behaving. songs, isn't it, where there's not really much that's known about. It no, well, there's not that I know anyway. Not a lot, not a lot at all. I'd say like Sea of Madness and Deja Vu are probably like the two songs on this album that are just like they just songs. they're just great they're, songs. There's no like massive lore behind it. No, and, and also like when I was listening, I mean sometimes I think it's just just a song, mate. Yeah, just a song. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. a song, mate. Chill out. Especially Deja Vu. We'll get to it, but Jesus, it's, I think pretty sure the whole song is just about Deja Vu. Like the have inter- you seen what's coming next? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> You've been there before. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, it's the stage RV, Bruce. Calm down. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's not much to say about that song. It's, it's, you know, it's a good song, but it's got some tasty riffs. It's got some tasty riffs. Mm-hmm. It's not the, be- I'd say it's not the best song on the album. The riff at the start is like, oh, so Adrian and Dave play it. 
So when you play it on a when you play the guitar on your own, it just doesn't sound like the riff. Yeah, because of the yeah. But when you play it together, do you know what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. The, it needs both. Um, Yeah, that one. That one. Mm. Yeah. Is it, does it not sound like the riff because you didn't play it right? <laughs> no, the first bit, though. Yeah. Oh, and that. <laughs> I know what you mean. There you go, baby. I like that. The, the riff it is got good riffs, but I would say it's just, it's uh, in the terms of, oh, three, two. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, in terms of songs, that was, it's okay. Let's, let's move along. Let's, let's keep this bus move rolling. Along. Let's move, move along. along. And we're going to an absolute banger. Although not everybody agrees. We are going with the next song, which is Heaven Can Wait. Here we go. Oh, oh yeah! This I, this is this is a big song live. But that bridge where it breaks down, the solo it builds back up again. I was like, yes, yeah, this is the part that everybody hates. Whoa. Oh right, yeah, I could have been to a football match. I love this. I love this stuff live. I love crowd participation. Getting too drunk at shows and just Whoa. yeah, lads, lads, lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question though. Can heaven wait? It's, the drumming is so good. Steve Harris having the final say. Boom. Boom. Last Boom. One. Boom. Boom. <laughs> nah, it's always Nico. There you go. Oh. Heaven can wait. Um, yeah, so what I was saying during that song, which I'm probably probably all sick of hearing us talking over the music, but you know, if you don't like it, let us know if you want us to change yeah. the format. But we can um, sit here in silence. Yeah, diversity <laughs> for the whole thing. For the whole thing. Yeah. Uh it, de- it like, definitely divides fans that song. Mm. I think it's a great song. I love that song, but I can understand it's the repetitiveness that a lot of people don't like the, the Heaven Can Way over and over again. But yeah. but my argument is why it's a great song mm-hmm. is if you see it live, yeah. you are... Like I said, th- that middle bit and the build back up with the chant and the solo. The whole song. The whole yeah, song. Yeah, I, the, yeah, like yeah, it's, it is great it's so much crowd, like, yeah. crowd, participation, crowd participation in it that you were just are so in, into it. Yeah. And it's, and like they nail that song as well. I know what you're saying because, like I said, I, for the longest time, had a bit of an issue with this yeah. song. When I was a kid, it was always one I was like, oh, this is the, you not, know, not enough. Happy dee 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 dee. Wow. It's the repetitive of the heaven can wait and the dee 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 dee. But they're like the, the football chant side of it, the solos. The, yeah, whoa, he gets you. He pulls bit. you back. He, oh, yeah, it pulls it, you back. It just got, and I'm just like, actually, the whole thing's. This. Jesus. I don't know what's happening. We need a little, like, fine box every time we do we should a have a counter. We should have a counter on this one every time. <laughs> Ding. Yeah. Every time I touch the mic. I never touch the microphone. <laughs> it's usually me with a guitar. It's usually oh. you with a guitar, not just, not just me. Um, yeah, so speaking of guitar, bring that bad boy over here. Bad bring the bad boy over here and give us some. I have to say, like, actually, this album is probably one of the ones I don't know too many Maiden riffs. I do quite a lot of uh, research. Like, it's quite a lot of like, practicing. Scratch up. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is quite a technical album. There's a lot of, like, really fast stuff. Mm. Um, so the, uh, oh, that bit, you know, I said the guitar bit in, um, Heaven can wait. The bit where it breaks down before mm-hmm. the whoa. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, do, 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 that bit. Yeah. So good. Yeah, great. Love it. Yeah. You love to hear it. Um, I thought I'd take a little, yeah, we'll take a little break from listening to some tunes. Let's have a, okay. let's have a little, let's have a little palate cleanser. Do you know what I mean? We'll have a little after eight, a little, a little coffee and an after eight mint. You know what I mean? In, <laughs> if anyone not in the UK, you know, look it up. Look it up. Yeah. Um, and so what, so we're going to talk about the artwork. Oh, yes. That's a uh, big, big. 
big, big thing going on with the mm-hmm. artwork. So a lot of it, obviously, because we grew up with CD, you don't get uh, really anywhere near the amount of artwork, although you've got the uh, inset there, haven't you? I For anyone that be able to see. needs to be reminded. Yeah. So there it is. There it is. So you get a lot of the artwork. And the artist, uh, oh, where's his name? Derek Riggs. Derek Riggs. Riggs. Derek Riggs. Yeah, I lost his name then. Um, he spent three months painting this. Yeah. And it drove him insane. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. He said, I'm never doing anything that intricate again. Yeah. And Lo and behold, the next one, Seventh Son, is just a blue sea of nothingness yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah, Eddie yeah. in the middle. <laughs> there's your, there's yeah. your album cover. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty wild, to be fair, isn't it? I remember with this CD staring at it for, for hours, just trying to pick out all the little... The little references. The little references. There's so many in there. So, I mean, you can obviously, if you know, go online, have a look at the artwork. And it's there's really loads great. Of, yeah, there's loads of um, breakdowns of all the references. And for instance, some of the references... Uh, on the street corner, there is 22, is it Acacia, Acacia Avenue? Acacia Avenue from, from the Number of the Beasts. Beast. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, the Aya Horus neon sign, obviously, yep. um, Power Slave. Um, the Black Cat from Live After Death. Um, the logo in the middle of his chest is uh, Derek Riggs' signature. Yep. Yep. Um, he's got a radioactive penis. He's got- Well, Radioactive pants, anyway. Radioactive pants, yeah. That, that I nice didn't... little uh, radioactive sign on there, is yeah. that? Yeah, no, I know, I know. And he did say, and I read the words that Derek Riggs said was, he's got a radioactive willy. Yeah, that's why I said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, the clock. 2358. I don't know if you can see our clock. Just uh Oh, oh, that's convenient. Hey, it's it's almost, like a little, almost like a little Easter egg. Uh, yeah, well, I guess I pointed out, so I ruined that. Never mind. <laughs> 2358, um, two minutes to midnight. Yeah. Um, what else is there? There's a Spitfire. If uh, you look on the far left, there is a red light apartment, which alludes to Charlotte the Harlot. Charlotte the Harlot. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's also Phantom of the Opera House. Mm-hmm. Phantom Opera House, sorry. Obviously, Phantom of the Opera, which we got to saw on the Legacy of the Beast tour yep. play. Yep. Well, yeah, we got we got we've seen some pretty good you know, made in tunes. Lately. Mm-hmm. Just those we'll two. We'll get we'll get to the live shows in a bit. Yeah, we'll do that after yeah. this, shall we? we? Okay. Or do you want to go on to the next song? Well, I was just, just going to point out some more things. Oh, you got this. some more? Yeah, no. there is quite a few. Oh, so you got the Ancient Mariner day. Seafood Restaurant. <laughs> there are loads of names on here as well. How They're big like, do you reckon the actual original painting was? It must have been like a good size. Oh, it must have been. Yeah. I mean, look, if you look at the, um, so below the pyramid, that city look, goes on for miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so small. Poor guy drove himself mad with this. Yeah. Nah, the Nico McBrain is wearing a t-shirt that says Iron Who. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Dickinson's holding a brain, obviously a reference to Peace of Mind, oh, yeah. the album cover. Yeah. Yeah, there is uh there is a lot. Honestly, on here. like just, even even down to like the lamppost there on, on the very front of the cover, yeah. there's that yellow bin. Yeah. Like that's from the first Iron Maiden yeah. album cover with the the lamp Definitely post. if you if you've got some time, just go through and see how much you can spot because it is it is it, that's not even Flight of Icarus. Flight of Icarus. There's loads. The yeah, best you could go Iron Maiden on for song. Ages. Um yeah, literally you could you can spend hours doing mm-hmm. that. You in you know you'll find a lot. Um okay, so yeah. There's that Jackson. Oh yeah, there's the what Jackson, the old, the old one-off that no one's ever seen ever again. That custom-made Jackson with all the MIDI controls, and I don't even know. I don't even know how we played. No, no idea. But um, yeah, okay. Let's go into whilst we're having our break. Let's go into the first time made in CEO. Me first. Or you you first? first. It's always you because yours is better okay. than mine. Mine, <laughs> mine's just like, huh? You took me along. Uh, just before I joined the army, uh, I was in my last year of school. Uh, it was the same when I told my Metallica story, yeah. where I saw Metallica on the Sunday okay. at Download in 2003. The, the not grooming story. That one, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The night before, Maiden had headlined. Oh, okay. So the, I was like uh, 15 when I first saw them. At that Download. Yeah. And growing up, Metallica were always my, my first band that I always loved. But I always like, I was re- like, obviously, I was getting into Maiden on the side. Yeah. Um, obviously 16, 17 and up until now I've really deep dive, but the first couple of years I was just sort of like, oh, I, I like this, but you know, there's a lot to get your head around at that Number point. of the beast and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the first time I saw them back in 2003 and it was just before they released, uh, Dance of Death. 
Okay. So I guess the current album at the time when I saw them was Brave New World. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. And yeah, it was my first time. I remember the first time. So what I did was, um, do you know you have like the ice cream vans mm-hmm. and like the bars and stuff like that? I remember I, I wasn't at the front for this first gig. And this is where I like fell in love with Maiden. Yeah. Because you know, I was always partial to it. Like I liked it, but this is the moment. It was just was on the like, fringes. Type yeah. Thing. So I was there and I found, I remember me and Al were there. I found uh, a port party, you know, like a port Yep. Um, sat on that. And uh, yeah, no one kicked me off. None of the security kicked me off. So oh, I just sat on, oh, sat on top. But it wasn't oh, like it was being. Used. I thought you meant you just no, sat no, no. in a water party <laughs> listening to Iron Maiden and just taking a deuce. <laughs> this is door wide open, just watching the show. This is this is the best day of my life. Beer. Just beer. Yeah. Fifteen year olds taking a dump. I sat on, on top. On I top. should have said that. Okay. I climbed on top of porta bodies. Yeah. But it was one that was like next to an ice cream van, and it was wasn't being used. It was just. I guess it was for the staff and I they hope blocked it, wasn't it or something you. like that. But I just sat, I remember just sitting on top of there watching that set. And like, if you haven't seen Maiden before, yeah, then see them. But there is a special thing about them. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's the, it's the whole thing that doesn't quite exist anymore in bands. Like when we mm. saw them, even now the theatrics, the whole show, yeah, it's a whole thing. Like it, it comes straight from the A's and even still now with the, yeah. the, the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Well, and that was the, yeah, that was the first time I saw them. I saw them later on that year, just before I joined the army, me and the same friend Al, we went to, so Dance of Death had just been released. We went to London yeah. when Earl's Court was still open. Earl's Court. Went to see the Dance of Death tour at Earl's Court. Mm. And I mean, yeah, when it comes to Maiden and Metallica, it's never a, should we get tickets? It's, it's like, let's go. It's the law. Yeah. We, we went to Twickenham, didn't we? To see yeah. Metallica. So I saw them on, yeah, I've seen them on like the Matter of Life and Death tour, mm. New Frontier, obviously all the downloads, the Sonospheres. Yeah. We've been a few times, haven't we, to the yeah, Twickenham? Yeah, we went to, and- well, Twickenham was Metallica. We went to uh, oh, the sorry. O2. I saw Maiden at Twickenham, yeah. yeah you went I, there for I that, one. There. Yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, we went to the O2 mm-hmm. and we saw the uh, Legacy of the Beast tour, which was my first time seeing L- Maiden, yeah up in london which was great yeah that, that was so good as well because that i got to see so many good songs that like yeah. they never played especially with that stage show with the spitfire oh but the whole high, thing like, yeah man the hell? ace is high yeah what else was there flight of icarus phantom of the opera yeah bruce with his flamethrowers was it phantom of the hallow be thy name hallow be thy name, hallow be thy name. On the set for yeah that, one, that was yeah. and they never played that before i think or they we, it was very rare yeah, what well, Hallowed Be Thy Name? Yeah. So wasn't there a dispute? There was the a writing? lot. That, yeah, they. It was Hallowed Be Thy Name was in their set since Number of the Beast. Yeah, pretty much always. Yeah, they yeah, played yeah, it. yeah. And then I can't remember. What there was year, a writing like, dispute. I think. Credits, yeah, yeah. There credits. was a, a lawsuit dispute. So they basically they took it out. Um, but it, it's back in now. So yeah, and yeah. It's and it's rightly amazing. so because that is an amazing song live. It is, it is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's seen live. Yeah, and I love Flight of Icarus as you know. It's my mm-hmm. favorite Maiden song. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was my first time. And then we went this year, like we said, and we went to see the Future Past mm-hmm. in Birmingham, which was great. Uh, yeah, a good mix of Sinjutsu, the new stuff, and uh, Somewhere in Time stuff. With no one thought they would ever play it, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, yeah, which is obviously coming yeah. up in a bit. We'll talk about that in a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Alexander the Great, what a, what a great tune. Hey. Anyway, that was terrible. Let's move on to the next song. So we're going to go on. Did you know he died of fever in Babylon? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? You'll see. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. <laughs> that is, threw me off right there. Right. Anyway, on to the next song. Uh, people know. People Pe- know. People know? Yeah. Do they know? Yes, they, they will. Okay. They will. <laughs> Let's go then. All right. On to uh, the next one. The next one. The next one. Chanel. Here For the go. record, I like this song. Yeah, because like, yeah. oh, I like this, this song. This is a great it's song. It's a great song. It's a very, it's kind of like Sea of Manus. It's a very overlooked song by like a lot of people. Agreed. But it is a, a really cool song. It is great. And uh, here we go. It does remind me a little bit. I might ruin it for you. Ace is high. Great song. Love the rhythm bit for this. Yeah. And there's the synth. It just creates like this massive soundscape, doesn't it? Like kind of a real different solo, that little bit. Yeah, definitely an overlooked 
definitely an yeah, Asian local. It's a great song. Meta what? Meta what? Meta what? This is meta. Straight another, back in. Another guitar melody. And the bass and drums in just unison there, like. There's a lot of this on this album, isn't there? There's no like fade outs or crescendos. It's just. Uh, it's just Steve Harris. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was the loneliness of long distance runner, and. So I, it wasn't a lot I could find on this, but it was apparently the song is actually based on a short story by Alan Silito. Yeah. Uh, which was made into a film. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about a young, uh, young offender who gets sent to Borstal. And if you don't know what Borstal is, <laughs> it was a young institute, a young offenders institute that was pretty brutal mm. back in the day. Uh, like the Borstal dots, you ever seen those? Mm-hmm. Like the little dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now just hipsters get them done and like, not yeah. really, but not all right getting your head kicked in. And like, you know, you could go into the metaphors of it and the, but yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Steve said, it's not literally about a, the long, loneliness of the long distance runner. It's about, cause in the film, right. He gets to the, so he's like pushed and pushed. Push, yeah. Cause to they win. want him to win. Yeah. Though, yeah. But for their own needs, yeah. it's not about him. He no, was winning no, no. competitions. They were making money off of it and fame and stuff. And yeah. So he gets to the finish line and then he stops. And just because, it off. Because he's, the loneliness of the long distance runner, he's just like, why am I doing this all for me? This isn't for me. So it's like a metaphor. Yeah, it's a metaphor about, yeah. like, I guess, nonconformism. Yeah. And That's uh, what I was kind of sticking it to the man. Man. Yeah. But don't go to Borstal. Right? No, don't go to Borstal. What's the American equivalent of Borstal? Ju- juvenile Quentin? Hall? I don't know. They call it over there? Juvie? Juvenile juvie. Hall? Yeah, juvie. Juvenile uh, Hall? Don't go to prison. No. Kid money. prison. Don't do that. It's a money making. Did you see that judge who got like arrested? He sent loads of people to prison. I'm just, not surprised. He was just making so much money off sending people to prison, yeah, apparently. Yeah, well, paid by private. Uh, doesn't surprise me. No. Nope. Yeah. There's, don't go to prison. It's not worth it. Doesn't work. Anyway, on to the next song. Or unless there's any guitar bits, actually, before we run ahead. Because oh, I, yeah. I have a tendency um, to just run off. No, yeah, no, it's cool. No, not too much. But not too much. Not too much. Uh, Bring that Kramer back over it, baby. Go on, Kramer. Bit, obviously, it starts off, and then the bit I really like is the, um, I said about that rhythm part. But- mm. Very ah. Iron Maiden. Yes. So good. A really cool song. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I don't really, I'm not really familiar with much of the riffs from this album, so I'm kind of like, I learned some of it this week. Yeah, as know? much as you can. That's the one. Just really like this bit. And then on the second bit of that, you can hear Adrian sort of doing this. Uh, what does he does? It's like a. It's not that. Something like that. It's just like a. Just in the background. So yeah, if you yeah. take some time to learn it, it's like, sounds really good. Cool. Yeah, but, like you yeah. say, the problem is when you're learning like kind of Maiden stuff without the like other guitarists there as well. To, yeah. It kind of, yeah. you have to play along to the song kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to fit in. But yeah, there's yeah. some great riffs in there. Definitely. But uh, yeah, let's, 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 let's keep this train, let's keep this bus going. This party bus. And we're going to move on to the next song. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah, let's go. Then, Stranger in a Strange Land. Big boy Steve coming in there. Ooh, baby. Love a little shuffle. Oh, Brave New World. They reference like Sea of Madness on Book of Soul. Did Adrian write this? Yeah. Yeah. 
It's just catchy, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Double solo again. A lot more mellow solo, a lot more like yeah. just... Atmospheric. Atmos- that was the word. It was a goddamn <laughs> word. I fucking love Maiden. That's yeah. It. Can we just do a Maiden back-to-back? Have you seen that? I kiss. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. Hey, listen, man, you can't stop that money-making train. Can't stop the gene. Can't stop the gene. So there you go. Stranger in a Stranger Land. What a tune. Mm-hmm. What a tune. Um, apparently, Adrian was inspired by this by uh, speaking to an Arctic explorer who had found a frozen dead body. Yeah, I heard that. Or did he put the body there? We'll never know. Adrian. Adrian. Well, not Adrian. I meant the explorer. <laughs> <laughs> Just Adrian turns up, kills a guy in front of him. That's how Were you the- really writing guitar solos? <laughs> I've never seen Adrian Smith and this so-called explorer in the same room. Here on Crime Watch, have you seen this man? He looks like your mum from 1984. <laughs> Ancient aliens. <laughs> he does, though. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? I, we went to a High on Maiden gig. And yeah. uh, I don't know if I was super drunk. but I was Have con- you seen this man? <laughs> <laughs> He's synthesized and dangerous. He synthesized, he synthesized a man to death. Yeah. <laughs> no, what but seriously, seriously, on the Higher Maiden gig, Higher Maiden gig we went yeah. to, which is like a yeah, they're a great cover band, great yeah. cover band. If you get a chance, go see them; they're really mm-hmm. good. Yeah. But I was convinced that the guitarist was Adrian Smith at one point, and I was like, "Is that him?" Oh, because he had the mullet. He had and, the mullet. Yeah, he had the band, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, man, that'd be like no one would believe it was really him. If he, he really was. nailed those solos as yeah, well. He like studied like the moves. Yeah, and everything. I was yeah, like, he was really good. That's goddamn Adrian Smith. <laughs> You tell you tell anyone you'll end up in the Arctic, mate. <laughs> Synthesize. Synthesize. Yeah. yeah, that's it. But um one of the things that Adrian did say that that was obviously it's a lot more mid paced tempo like we were talking about and yeah, it gave yeah. him a lot of room to creatively in Maiden, he said, in that song with his solo and stuff like that. Yeah. He felt like Yeah, not shredding the such not shredding, of bends yeah. and sort of Yeah, like yeah. you say that more kind of proggy? No. Mm. Uh, say proggy it's more it's kind of like it's more david gilmore gilmore yeah that's what you I know mean. what i mean it's like very gilmore. very bendy gilmore solo yeah, type isn't it, it? Yeah, like yeah comfortably numb or something like that mm, yeah that's fair yeah mm. very good well, that's a good point I didn't mm. think of that. yeah there you go any uh guitar bits from from you obviously I love that little bit. Really cool bit, isn't it? Yeah, that little. Yeah. It's like with a lot of the the riffs and stuff in this album, they're very recognisable, aren't they? Like, just straight away. Uh Uh-huh. But yeah, um, I love that song. Yeah, you were saying earlier on about the uh, Adrian Smith solo project stuff. Mm. I'll, I'll... write it down for you but yeah, he cool. did it he did a so so he did like a couple he did more than a couple but the biggest ones were psycho motel psycho and motel. asap asap okay adrian we'll talk about the naming of but, these things later yeah but. yeah but there's a um, what's it called silver and gold okay and there's another song called the lion but silver and gold is like a proper like 80 it's kind of it sounds like it's produced at the same time as this album it's got oh, a okay. very it's got that vibe. somewhere in time feel, but it's yeah. a very sort of like poppy eighties tune, and I think you like it. Oh, it's okay. like it's on the borderline of cheese, but you like I love cheese, like loads right. of. But there's those of like really cool guitar. Just bits, give you know? me cheese. I love cheese. Uh, power metal. Yeah, it's really cool. I love cheesy, cheesy stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. Does that even work with the locking nuts? No. <laughs> just realised what I did there. <laughs> um, Hang on a minute. <laughs> I've locked this. You've locked that. I've locked this well. forward rope. So I'm just trying to like. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, Floyd Road. You're not not the one. The yeah. temp. What you were saying about the temple? Yeah, of this yeah, yeah. Song, very, does it remind you of something? This is maybe why you like it. Stop asking me these questions. Mm-hmm. 
that bit. It's very... Yeah. Mm. But, uh... What was that? That's another rap. What do you mean, what's that? What was it? Are you joking? No, I, I'm so bad at, like, recognising songs like that. Oh, Fight of Icarus. <laughs> Don't blame me. Don't blame me with your sucky guitar. Uh, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is literally his favourite song. Yeah, oh, well, I, <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I'm just trying to be a poser. The people on the internet are going to figure out, he doesn't like Maiden. He just borrowed this guy's t-shirt. I know you really like that song. Yeah, I love that song. Uh, so I was, I was reading, uh, whilst doing research for this, that, um, that apparently this album was never really intended to be a concept album about time yeah, and travel. Yeah, it just sort like, of just, ended up, they, like, they all watched Blade Runner, obviously. Off their box. Off their, <laughs> <laughs> like the, the intro to this album when did Blade was, Runner come uh, out? Vangelis, huh? When did Blade Runner come out? E2, okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah, because um, Harrison Ford had just done Star Wars in 77. I'm pretty sure Blade Runner was like, it was 80 or 82. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, Heavily influential at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they opened this tour and also the tour that we last saw them with the Blade Runner intro by Vangelis. Mm. When's Blade Runner set? Is it 20? Well, you've got the second one, which is 2049. Oh. So I think the first one is actually like 2019. Oh, we're not addressed. Like, think I don't know, if it, if type in the comments if you yeah, know. man. <laughs> I don't know. No. I've watched it a couple of times, but I'm just it's saying we're not dressing like Blade Runner yet, and I'm pretty sad about it. Mm. Everybody should be wearing dusters. I know. Where's the flying cars? Where's the where's, the, cars? where's the pills in a uh, meal on a pill? Exactly. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. <laughs> Get some fish and chips down you. Oh, like a kebab. This is this is the worst. <laughs> This is the worst thing we've ever done. <laughs> and this is episode three. And if you've stayed with us this long, you're a better person than me. Um, all right. On to the next song. On to the next On song. On to the next song. We've only got a couple left. We got a... Haven't we played this one before? Oh. I'm getting some sort of like... I'm getting some sort of... Deja vu. Deja vu. Deja who? I feel like I've been here before. <laughs> Yeah, 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 cool. yeah. Like, pl- yeah. brilliant guitar. Great player. guitarist, Amazing yes. Amazing guitar. He's literally just describing Deja Vu. We're recording this, I hope you know that. Such a good bridge. Mm. Listen to how many guitars come in on this next bit. Bruce Dickens' voice. Like his creepy, like, yeah. fear of the dark. Fear of the dark voice, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I say. Oh, yeah, oh, fear- oh, oh, oh. Again, like, another overlooked but banging song. Mm. That's an awesome song. That's a great song. This, this album is just... All killer, no filler. Just yeah, baby. Absolute. Mm-hmm. Love that song. Um, yeah, not a lot to say about it. Like again, it's one of those songs. There's not a lot about it online. Mm. Um, again, lyrically not that deep. He's just singing about deja vu. Got nothing else. No, no. it's the same. Like obviously, I, I only got so much time in my life to dedicate to learning every single song from every single album. But this is the one where I didn't really learn too many. Really, you didn't to learn be, too much. To be, not to be fair. Listen, don't judge us. We have jobs outside of this. Okay? <laughs> I wish we could just sit around playing guitar and yeah. talking to you. I mean, this song is very sort of like there's loads of up and down the necks, technical changes and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, you know. yeah. So I, I, this is the one I put the least effort into. I learned a couple of riffs from it, but I'm not. It's not. Nah, not by doing that. It's a great song. No, it's an amazing song. It's It's one of my favourites on the album, to be fair. Yeah. uh, yeah. Well, um, we're kind of coming to the closing. Mm. The the grandioso finale. Uh The the longest Iron Maiden song. It was. Was? Was. Was the the longest Iron Maiden song up until that point. Well, what's the longest now? The the longest one now is um, off of Book of Souls. Yeah. The last track on Book of Souls, yeah. It's like 17 minutes or something like that. Could you imagine? Like, you know, like Steve. About the R101, <laughs> the airship. It, you know for a fact, though, like, Adrian's like, Steve, yeah, stop playing. You keep playing. <laughs> the one with the piano in. Yeah. No? No. I'm not really as... I have listened to Book of Souls and stuff like that, but I'm not as familiar with it. So it has to be. And much more this era made in me. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Bruce got to uh, 
he wrote he plays a bit of piano as well. He got to write this piano part and bring plays it in. Plays a bit of piano, and, sings in one of the biggest yeah, rock bands in the world. As you do, flies planes. Flies planes, fencing. Fencing, yeah. Oh, fencing. Yeah. <laughs> as why don't why don't you? Yeah, exactly. I was meant to go see him fence once. Did I tell you about that? Did <laughs> You're such a nerd. <laughs> well, no, I got You my, would never go to fencing. It's uh he wrote me a little love letter. He wrote you a little. Bruce Dickinson did. Yeah, I know you've got to sign something by him. And here we go. Yeah, there. So it says, to Martin, have a good cause. Have a good course. Not <laughs> the cause. Oh, did a Dave Mustaine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Covered that on the last episode. <laughs> Check it out. So yeah, um, I, the story was that is when I was in the army, I had a friend called Lee who was he fenced for the army. Oh okay. And um, the army will just pay you to do any. Sport, well yeah, I didn't get, I'd get to do fencing, but uh, yeah, he was like a a really good fencer, and um, he knew I was into metal and stuff. And I remember chatting to him one day. And I said, uh, "Where are you off to this weekend?" He's like, "I got a competition up in Oxford or something like that." Mm. And he was like. You like Iron Maiden, don't you? And I was like, Do I? Do I? You know I do. And he's like, I'm pretty sure the one of the one of the band members is he comes <laughs> to the it. competitions I go to. One of the guys, I can't. And I said, What, Bruce Dickinson? And he goes, He looks like him, but his name's not Bruce. I was like, What do you mean? He's like, on all the um registers, yeah. it's it's Paul. His name's Paul. And I was like, the penny dropped at that moment. I was like, Yeah, that's him. Is because his name his real name is Paul. Oh. He's not called his uh, he's not called Bruce Dickinson. It's his middle name. Oh, okay. So it's Paul Bruce Dickinson. I did not know that. So Lee, like, wasn't into metal or Maiden whatsoever. So he was like, oh, it's not him because his name's Paul. But I thought it was. Because like everyone's the least was- metal name ever, isn't it? Paul. I am Paul. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Sorry, Paul. Anyway, Lee said, uh, so yeah, at that point, I was like, yeah, that's definitely him. Um, so awesome. at that point, Lee was like, mate, like, just come up one weekend and watch me fence and, you know, you get to get some stuff Touching signed me, and maybe yeah. uh, stalk him and stuff. I mean, not stalk. <laughs> Break into the locker room whilst he's perform- yeah. whilst he's fencing. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, he got back to me one point and he was like, do you want to come up on this date? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Lo and behold, I ended up going on my promotion course. Oh. My, Lance, my Lance Jack course in the Ooh. army for three weeks up in Ottenburn in Scotland. Well, on, the border, on the border of Scotland, anyway. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't go. So, anyway, I said to Lee, look, mate, take this, um, and if you could get it signed, that would be great. And obviously he said to him, he wanted to come meet you, but he's on a course. So yeah. he wrote, have a good, that's why it says, have a good course. He spelt my name wrong, but I don't think Lee was going to correct him. Yeah. And, and also, <laughs> what you can do, rip the page out and make him write it again. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, mate, it's ain't good enough. Mate, that's not on. Come on, Brucey. Come on, Brucey. Come on, Brucey boy. Brucey bonus. Yeah. That is- so that's that little story. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I almost got to meet him. Yeah. Bit of a bit of a nothing story, really, isn't it? You just told a story about how you almost met him, but you didn't. Do you want to? <laughs> Do you want to get out? Leave now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, I could have just shown this random thing yeah, and okay, said, "Yeah, no. I got a thing saying have a good course." You're like, "What the yeah. hell? Why does it say that?" <laughs> he wrote it himself. He wrote it himself. No, he. Wrote it. Yeah. Right, anyway, let's get on. We're on the last song now. Let's do it. Come on. We're on to the Alexander the Great. Not Paul the Great. Not Matt the Great, is it? Well, I don't need a... So you know at the start where I was like, he died of fever in Babylon. Mm. That sound. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Simps, the guitar sound. Macedonian King. Could you imagine them going back and having to learn this song for that tour? Like, oh, it does sound more like just jamming at parts, though. And this part is epic. The gong. They always just take it right down, and then they get you on the train, baby. And then they get you up. Bruce is having a lovely sit down right now. Getting a couple drinks. In this side. Like, why is the date there? Just in case you didn't know, well, he died of fever in Babylon. In Babylon. R.I.P. Alex. Big A. There we go. There you go. There you have it. We did it. We did it. Somehow. We got through it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, just a little point I wanted to go back to. You remember we were talking about the artwork and stuff like this? So yeah. The, the t-shirt that I'm currently wearing um, is the new artist seems to be Dan Mumford. Mm. Who he's is, done quite a lot for him, hasn't he's he? He's done a lot. Yeah. yeah. If, you if you don't know who Dan Mumford is, you should check out his 
His yeah. illustration stuff is sick. It's really good. Really cool. Because we bought, I got this one, and then we both have the Flight of Icarus. Yeah, the Flight of we? Icarus one, yeah. Um, and they're both Darren Mumford's. And bloody love his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, yeah. it's really, really cool. He's done a lot of tour posters and stuff for mm-hmm. them as well. So yeah. That's cool. But yeah, just a little side note there, a little sidebar. Um, apparently one of the main, uh, Bruce being, or Paul, as we can now call him, uh, um, the reason that they didn't play this was because uh, Adrian couldn't learn the solos. <laughs> yeah, I'd, the I'd he heard said. that as well. Yeah, either he just couldn't be asked. Or... I don't think anyone could be asked. Yeah, yeah, Blame Adrian all you like. No one wanted to do that. Um, That's then, the thing. You've got such a catalogue of songs. Yeah. Like, you don't remember a song you wrote in your mid-20s. You no, know? absolutely like, not. Like, I don't even know how they go back through them. But just, yeah. But, um, yeah, that was especially learning an eight-minute long song, let alone. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was that was somewhere in time. We did it, yeah, baby. We did it, we did it, and that was and uh, that was great. I love that album. I we really were, love that album. We were debating, weren't we, whether to start off with Seventh Son? It was a it was a real or uh, somewhere in time. It was really like well, we could either way. It's it's going to be amazing. It's a winner, winning chicken dinner, and yeah. Really. But um, we decided on somewhere in time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just probably due more in fact me. Just that's what the we saw them play last. Mm. So that was the only. Deciding factor for me could have easily been a toss of coin. Yeah. So we most likely will do uh, Seventh Son next. We I will. Reckon. So if you want to see that, stick around. Maybe not next, but we will do no, it. No, no, yeah, the, the next Maiden album. Oh, the will next be, Maiden will album will be Seventh, Seventh Son. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, and then we'll probably, at some point, hopefully, end up covering all of them. Yeah. At some point. <laughs> Maybe not all of them. <laughs> what, the newer ones? Yeah. No, there are some great songs on there. There's some good albums. But- yeah. There's a lot of albums. There is. Well, who knows how long we'll be doing this for. <laughs> it might be cancelled already. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, we haven't put, them on, put it out yet. We haven't we? even put them out yet. <laughs> so. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Mm. Um, please like, comment. Just let us know what you think. Ha! Just when you thought it was over. Just when you thought you got away with it. <laughs> You're on about six and I'm on about three. So yeah. I think I win this you one. You win this one. You win this one. Um, my microphone knocks. I'll go through when I edit this. And then ding. ding. <laughs> we'll keep a tally check right thank you so much see you Cheers. later guys thank peace you.